Hey, welcome back everybody for this another amazing fireside chat here with James Ho, who leads Animoca Ventures. Did I get that right? Yep. <laughs> leading leading Animoca Ventures as well. And uh, as you, today's you know topic throughout uh, NFT Con, we've been covering a lot of things from NFTs, metaverses, but uh, you wouldn't be able to actually even talk about metaverses gaming and whatnot without mentioning Animoca. Animoca is almost in between all the cool, amazing projects out there. You saw things from like ApeCoin to Sandbox and many other amazing uh, partnerships and cool projects, which you know we'll have James talk a little bit more about that. But I want to say welcome, James, to NFT Con. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Awesome. Well, yeah, I guess if you want to do like a quick short intro about you and what you do at Animoca, uh, just to get everybody like fully caught up uh, to, and I guess also to like a short little intro about Animoca for those that are brand new to NFTs. Sure. Okay. So um, Animoca was, uh, you know, one of one of the early companies in, in the free to play space. Uh, it's actually a, a decade old company. I'd say the first chapter of Animoca really was free to play and bringing licenses uh, IP partners onto the free-to-play arena. Uh, and it's sort of first foray into Web3 was in 2017. We had a chance to invest uh, in the team behind Dapper Labs, uh, and we published CryptoKitties uh, for Asia Pacific. Uh, so that really was our sort of first sort of onboarding onto Web3. Uh, we since uh, have uh, made a, a really big shift to focus on Web3, uh, have investments including OpenSea, Sandbox, Axie Infinity, YGG, etc. So I've joined the company in 2018 and had uh, the pleasure of really experiencing the whole sort of wild ride in terms of what Web3 and GameFi um, and really first started off in business strategy, uh, evolved into partnerships and ecosystem development, and, and now spearhead uh, the Animal Ventures, uh, which really focuses on the metaverse investments. Uh, so you, you, on the met, uh, on your Animoca venture side, you're focusing specifically on metaverses only, or I guess you do you cover kind of like the, the gaming side and uh, I guess new things like NFTs and PFTs as well. Sure. So when I say metaverse, we have a broad spectrum of focuses. Uh, metaverse uh, fund really focuses on anything that hinders and touches the metaverse. So this covers everything from gaming, uh, NFT, social, social fi as we call it, uh, tools, infrastructure, uh, example, digital identity, security, uh, wallet integration, uh, and some emerging technologies in, we're seeing that are affecting and sort of impacting the metaverse experiences. And from your guys' uh, I guess from all the deals and projects you're looking at, are you guys looking at from metaverses ranging from anything from the VR, AR, all the way up to like just even like video game, digital mobile mobile worlds as well too? I guess for, for many that are looking into like metaverse, I guess, how's your guys' definition been for that? Um, or are you guys looking at all the different mediums when it comes to like investing and working with the different metaverse brands out there? Um, it's a good question. So. For us, obviously, we had our, our first sort of, for those that don't know, we were early sort of investors into uh, Sandbox. And we're actually the largest shareholder of Sandbox and we're very closely with Sandbox team, Arthur and Sebastian. So kudos to the team for the growth and expansion. Um, for, from a company's perspective, we always wanted to build open, uh, didn't want to fall prey to building closed. So we also have invested in a, in a handful of uh, metaverses. So to date now, we have close to uh, 25 different metaverse investments. And part of the thesis for us to invest in different metaverses is one, uh, to, because we're content owners and IP aggregators, we have the ability to facilitate different experiences. And we do believe that there are going to be more than a handful of strong metaverses. And each and every one that we invested in are building quite differently, are bringing different emerging technologies into play. As you mentioned, VR, AR, mixed reality. Uh, so we do believe that there's going to be a platform for different sort of distribution. Uh, so we're sort of engaging and supporting uh, the ones that we've invested in. Awesome. And, and from the metaverses, I guess, when you're mentioning like all the different metaverses out there, um, are you, I, I think Sandbox is probably like the best example of like a lot of the collaborations. Is that a lot of what the Animaka also helps in, in kind of like what you're doing behind the scenes too, is just kind of forging those partnerships and and uh, uh, projects across the different metaverses as well too? Because I guess like, that's what we're seeing is that there's like Artifact and Clone X's are just now jumping into Sandbox. And then there's like ApeCoin. ApeCoin seems like there's going to have the whole ecosystem built around that as well, too. Um, is it the idea that you guys are kind of like combining or looking at different ways to kind of uh, fuse the different metaverses or or let people jump between uh, all those experiences as well? I, I think we take a hand in, 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 in shaping and helping uh, different parties build different sort of uh, partnerships and experiences. Obviously, the Sandbox team uh, has grown quite large now. I believe they have over 300 people on the team. So 
uh, they themselves are, are masters at in terms of building partnerships and relationships, uh, both from an uh, individual company level as well as a group level that we also facilitate uh, different sort of discussions and inter inter uh, sort of collaboration. Uh, for us in the, the new era, we, we still think that metaverses is still uh, several years out in terms of hyper growth and acceleration. Uh, so, you know, there are several key ones that we work very closely with, including High Street, Cryptoverse, uh, um, you know, uh, Wilder World. A lot of them are building quite differently. So where we sort of have the ability to facilitate collaboration, we introduce, connect, or ideate together. And I saw with the Animoco Venture side, you guys are kind of expanding out and building kind of, I guess, these, you started out first with the, the Brink Accelerator. Was that like a few years ago as the first one? That, uh, that focused on uh, play to earn and play to earn games, but you guys are creating kind of new other accelerators now or new other sub accelerators through the uh, Animoca Ventures? So uh, just to, to step back, we, we are, we're one of the investors of, of Brink. Uh, Brink one, uh, uh, Brink.io is one of the leading sort of accelerators or accelerators. So we've worked with them for several years and made sense for us to collaborate in a more deeper level. So we made an investment into their last round. Um, last Late last year, we actually kicked off our first Web3 accelerator called Launchpad Luna uh, and basically kicked off uh, a series of, uh, we received close to 200 submissions for this uh, first inaugural kickoff and have just sort of finalized on demo day uh, last week, actually, for the mm -hmm. first 30 sort of applicants that they presented. Uh, this has proven to be a very strong opportunity for us to incubate uh, very strong uh, talents to come into Web3. Uh, and we've since uh, then worked on several other key sort of accelerators, including the Sandbox Accelerator, uh, which has a $50 million fund for people building up the Sandbox. Uh, this achieved uh, a lot of noise uh, because the first two weeks they received over 600 applications uh, to build on the Sandbox. And we will be kicking off uh, a, a Guild model accelerator uh, in conjunction with the Brink as well too. Uh, so stay tuned for the Brink site. Uh, definitely a lot of exciting things to just spearhead the new sort of, sort of founders in this space. And for the accelerator, it's the same thing. You're looking for um, projects. Are they like super early brand new projects or even up to like existing projects that are trying to get into Web3? I guess, what is the kind of profiles of people with the uh, Animal Gun Break Accelerator? I guess for like the Luna, Luna Launchpad um, Accelerator. For those so that are like, quite, kind of like, yeah, projects that are listening right now. <laughs> so we're quite, um, you know, uh, take a look at the each and every one have different requirements and specifications. I think for the Launchpad Luna, which I was very heavily involved I can say a majority of the company came in, had solid business foundation and some traction already that may not have an understanding on deep tokenomics or NFT strategy or how to integrate into the Web3 market. Uh, so each and every one are quite different. Some are very early stage. So we, we welcome people that have a, a deep sort of passion for what they're building. Uh, and we hope to sort of onboard them to educate them and share with them the, the, the sort of ideation and connect them to different partners. Uh, so definitely each one have different series of, of phases. Some might come more mature that have built a very strong business to begin with and entering into Web3. Uh, so we've seen a variety that have also been accepted in the program. And when you guys are kind of like looking for you guys in, in investments for uh, energy projects, uh, clearly you guys have like a global reach now that you guys are looking at each of the different zones. Are you guys looking at like each different, at investing in projects in different um, places like, you know, uh, Southeast Asia gaming and NFTs, and then Western Western gaming, Korea, uh, Japan, etc. As well, um, how are you guys approaching it from each different uh, ecosystem, or, or you know, or, or you're not not targeting like a specific area at the, uh, at a single time? So we're definitely uh, uh, agnostic in terms of uh, opportunities that come. We, we we look at projects on the mirror of what they built uh, independently of where they're from. So we don't have any sort of uh, targeted budgeting for being a certain, a certain region. Uh, but more on the, the build itself. And I have to sort of emphasize that we're, we're very different than a typical VC in the sense that we don't look at it from a speculative investment in terms of just profit and gains, profit and losses, but more on how does our ecosystem fit into the, into their technology? And what does this, this technology bring to our ecosystem? Uh, because that, that brings a very different level of partnership and collaboration and, and, and sort of growth within our ecosystem. So if you're building a technology that we see that could potentially be uh, game changer in the next three years, and it will help 10 or 20 of our companies, we'll make an investment uh, on, on the on the founder to build this sort of technology and we sort of connect them to the teams. So that's one of the, the sort of key sort of ingredients that we look for is companies that have merit for us to even commercially integrate and use. 
Yeah, which is which is great. We're really different than the typical uh, startup or tech uh, VCs that we've seen, and others too, where they just don't get Web three. <laughs> They're looking at trying to like get the quick uh, uh, exit or like the quick leaving without thinking about the whole picture and stuff. So that's really cool to actually hear from that from from your guys' side as well, and and, and Amoka, of uh, figuring out how like you know, they're especially for like brand new early on ideas, like they are still trying to solve it out. And uh, uh, but if you guys can see that their potential in terms of their contributions to Web3 and Web3 gaming metaverses and NFTs, uh, you know, that's, that's that's super awesome. Yeah, and that's uh, the, the power to to us. I want to add that um, it's the really the the strength in now that we built up a very strong collective investment, uh, we're, we're closing in on close to 200 investments. We're starting to see very strong network effects. Uh, how each and every one of the companies that we help can be exponentially sort of uh, supported because of the, our network. Uh, and another important thing for us is that we're starting to see key trends pop up before they become full on fledged uh, trends. Uh, and this is uh, obviously a testament to us being builders as well. Uh, and not, not to say that we haven't gone through the grit and grind and built ourselves and failed, but that we do believe and uphold the fail faster if we can, uh, and also participate in terms of supporting the founding, the founders in this industry. Awesome, and I saw that with uh, with Animoca Brands too. You guys were also expanding out into a few other uh, key regions as well. Um, with I, I think it was the Animoca Brands uh, uh, KK was it the, for the uh, Japanese uh, expansion as well too. Can you kind of uh, highlight about um, that for everybody that is uh, that just kind of like first heard about it? Great, excellent. So um, our our founder Yat is also a huge anime fan. So I think uh, <laughs> it was natural that you know obviously with Japan's strong IP base. Uh, sort of uh, history and gaming history, it's always been on our radar to really grow that sector. Uh, we had an opportunity, we had a great opportunity to launch Animoca KK, uh, a full Animoca Japanese entity, uh, and recently succeeded in raising $10 million from some of the most uh, recognized brand partners, including Kadensha. Uh, so uh, we're very excited to, to launch Japan and have an opportunity to work with both the uh, on ground branded partners as well as the, the government in understanding how we can grow and then Mocha's presence in a really awesome market like Japan. Yeah, awesome. And and also too, I saw that uh, you guys did um, some more investments in into some more established like South Korea gaming companies too, like Com to Us and others as well too. Um, I saw that they, you know they're building, I guess, like on uh, other ecosystems outside of like Ethereum and others as well too. Is is with um, uh, with Animoca, I guess. Are you guys uh, taking a look at like how the other like layer twos, other uh, layer ones also come out um, in terms of gaming as well. Uh, I don't yeah. know if there's a particular chain. Great question. Uh, yeah, we're we're completely. Our company prides ourselves on being chain agnostic. Uh, obviously, we we built very heavily on Ethereum because of the the maturity of the the actual uh, layer one in terms of the the, the code, etc. Uh, but we've uh, since then also expanded into building on uh, BSC, Binance Smart Chain, uh, as well as we have deep partnerships in terms of Polygon, Matic. Uh, and also have uh, exploratory sort of op conversations on supporting projects on Solana. Uh, and we're also taking a look at the up and coming sort of protocols, including Near Protocol, Avalanche, and Algorand. So again, we do believe that we are, we do believe that we have an opportunity to shape uh, interoperability. And our goal is to really bring uh, an opportunity for open assets. And we do believe open assets in the future will do to what open source did to coding. Yeah, and and I, I guess from uh, from the standpoint of of the gaming side, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, more traditional video game developers trying to enter the space too. I'm sure you guys have interacted and seen many of them as well. <laughs> um, would you say that um, it, from the like traditional gaming developers out there, you know, like the big giants and everything, they're still trying to like figure it out, or they kind of like work hand to hand with Animoca or um, how's that? How's that been? Because we've seen, like, I guess there's some. There's been some game studios out there that, that tried to like just create NFTs randomly, and, and like it didn't really like work per se. But uh, obviously, Animoca has been been the leader of that too. And how how does that conversations or like how does those interactions look like with the uh, the more uh, I guess traditional Web two gaming uh, gaming companies out there? Yeah, great question. Um, so we ourselves, I think um, I think Animoca prides itself in in also being builders. So uh, I think we learned that you know building brings a very different level of context and depth and understanding how things are evolving, uh, and through acquisition and, and also internally. You know, F1 Delta Time Rev was built internally, uh, but we most recently acquired a game studio out of uh, Australia called Blowfish, 
a uh, team led by a gentleman named Ben, uh, is launching one of the hottest games this year. Uh, they spent the last two plus years in building this game called Phantom Galaxies. Uh, so when we acquired the studio, we knew that the game was a, potentially going to be a huge success and potentially a franchise opportunity. And what we didn't want to do is really work with the team hand in hand on token design economics, token economics, and structured a, a very intelligent NFT strategy. Uh, and please stay tuned and take a look at it, Phantom Galaxies, because we do believe we didn't follow the typical fashion of launching a token, raising a lot of money. We actually didn't actually uh, raise, do any private rounds of the token, but rather launched a token uh, NFT for game players that wanted to be onboarded and play the game. So that's one. Uh, internally, proved to the market on the evolution on games. Uh, obviously, being early sort of investors in Axie Infinity has uh, as its sort of strong merits in us learning and working together with the Axie team. Uh, but we do believe there's a there's a hyper curiosity in terms of the the tier one sort of game studios to come aboard Web3. Uh, two, I think I'm not sure if you followed, is that uh, in our previous round, we have investments from Ubisoft, uh, one of the perennial sort of triple uh, A studios. Uh, so we have a close relationship with the Ubisoft team to work closer together on something in the future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and for those that love the Japanese market, uh, we also have uh, investments from Square Enix, the team behind Final Fantasy. Uh, so those are interesting conversations that will likely take shape and form in the coming years. Awesome. Which that, that's exactly, and that's great. Actually, great to hear too that uh, some of these more big name brands like uh, Square Enix and Ubisoft is uh, working uh, or collaborating with you guys as well too in, in the future. So looking forward to that drop, I guess, <laughs> for future 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 alpha. We'll have to get you back on <laughs> for that as well too. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because I think that with uh, what we're seeing with the, the trend, you know, there's this big, um, you know, this is a big question that always comes up with like the video game world too, you know, like, like traditional gaming or traditional gamers is, has been rejecting a lot of the NFTs uh, as of late uh, for now, you know, I, for better or for worse, you know, there's this big tr distrust with some of the more traditional big game companies, you know, with their downloadable content and other like other um, predatory like, uh, uh, I should say just more like mistrust in, in some of the big brands, like what happened with like Activision Blizzard and whatnot too. But um, from your perspective, I guess, um, how do you think that uh, right now with the, the whole ecosystem right now, we have a lot of the Web3 investors and gamers out there, I guess, um, how do you foresee us kind of like bridging that gap between like the traditional gamer or getting into that direction? Is it by creating brand new games that is, a you know game heavy focus first with with adding on a, on the token or um i guess what, what from your perspective is there like a, a clear path for that or is it something that over time maybe the gamers will fully catch on uh catch up with as well i think um animoka have, having seen the the early days of free to play uh we sort of saw this whole same sort of narrative in terms of like you know even when animoka first was first founded uh people didn't want to come to develop you know, people that are used to building on $20 billion, $20 million budgets, $50 million budgets, triple A, really didn't believe on the 90 cent model in the hyper casual games. And that narrative looks very similar to what we're seeing now and people that are don't believe in NFTs. And I think that evolution in a decade or so created a over $80 billion sector in, in free to play. And some of these top notch game designers came onto this sector because it became quite apparent that you're hitting millions of users versus the hardcore gamers how we feel right now is that we're sort of in that similar space where people are not acknowledging but the merit of it is that anybody that played world of warcraft and experienced hyperinflation know that you know renting an object to play versus owning an object is it's still very new to them very foreign to them i believe right so even in the evolution of nft design uh, in terms of the metadata usage utility staking etc it's still very new to gamers so i believe um, I believe that um, the objectivity and the quantifiable metrics will, will come out where gamers fundamentally you still have to create a great game. There's no question about it, right? When you have a great game and you want to play it, uh, I think it's going to uh, grow on a lot of the, the, the naysayers right now that, hey, I own this, I can play it, I can share it. Um, and I believe that one thing that to, to also remember, uh, a lot of the predominant players in the world still sit in Asia Pacific as well too. A huge portion of us in asia and i do believe the narrative between the west and the east are slightly different uh, people understand that the ownership could, could lead to sharing facilitating collaboration so we hope to participate in shaping better games great games uh, and being part of that narrative and then hopefully onboard more 
more users to, to come onto the sector. Great. Yeah, I think that uh, in terms of uh, onboarding the, the next wave, uh, yeah, definitely making ge good games first <laughs> uh, is key. key and, it's the key. Yeah. It's definitely the key, <laughs> yeah. um, especially for uh, people that are trying to uh, decide or trying to make new people actually haven't made game. And that's that's why I've seen that some of the problems with some of, you know, not 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 to call people out with some of the games but there's definitely some early nft projects where they actually never made a game before and then you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a definitely a huge challenge they created nfts so uh you know definitely say that um, building games and, and great games first is a huge plus and um also too like i like the point that you highlighted too with the, the different regions too that you know southeast asia and even um, other growing uh, emerging markets as well too is actually having a massive uh, market of gamers and also leading the space too. I think that when everybody people always think about gaming, they always think, you know, I've seen the box of just like Western gaming with like you know the yeah. Xboxes and Sony and all that stuff too. But clearly, yeah. gaming is becoming mobile now, free to play, and more accessible, yeah. and soon to be cloud yeah. as well too. So, yep, yeah, absolutely. So I actually do think that um, uh, the we're seeing more and more sort of top studio talents from the veteran web, web two gaming come into web three and, and a lot of the challenges and the learning for, from them uh, when we invest is really sort of uh, educating them on understanding token design. You're effectively running your own economy now. Right. Uh, and, and that, um, has a lot of sort of benefits, uh, pros and cons, uh, for the success of the games. Right. So I think that this is something that we're, we're seeing, um, getting more and more complex and more exciting for, for creators. And, uh, so I do think this is here to stay, and I think we're going to see a hyper acceleration in growth because more talent is coming on board uh, into Web3 gaming. Awesome. Well, we're hitting kind of like the tail end here of our, our fireside chat, but uh, yeah, to kind of wrap things up, I guess, for, for closing thoughts, uh, what do you, how do you feel uh, the future looks like for uh, NFTs in the metaverses, I guess, in, in the next uh Next year, I should say that you one year is already ten years in the crypto space. So I, I, I totally agree with that. I, th I think what we're going to see very exciting is that uh, you know obviously with um, with, the, with the, our teams, I think with the guild models are going to accelerate. Uh, guild models are perpetuating the, the ownership of entities, enabling utility, and we're going to see some uh, crazy advancements in terms of uh, on chain sort of developments and tooling and data data sets. Uh, and I think that we're going to start we're, we're going to start slowly playing games that we don't know that gonna, they're going to be web three games uh we suddenly see triple a title so super exciting about that and i think that the metaverse will, will be live and thriving and growing in the next three to five years when we start seeing millions of users onboarded uh, and that's going to be also very exciting for us to be part of great well thanks again for hopping us with us uh here at nft con james and we'll definitely have to do another follow-up again in the uh, future too once we hear some more big names big titles uh, big game developers and AAA games uh, come down the pipeline through Animoca as well, too. So uh, thanks again, James, and thanks for Excellent. joining us at Amsterdam. Thank you, Justin. Thanks, guys. Take care.